welcome back to my channel. I am um, just finishing up with work and I'm about to go home and get my son ready to take him to speech class. Um, and I got to thinking because I told somebody in passing that um, I work for hospice and People sometimes ask questions. Um, uh, the normal one is, you know, oh, what's that like? Or that's got to be hard. Or, but the one person asked me a question I never got before, which was, oh, um, she's like, oh, how do you feel about assisted suicide? So I had to think because. Um, let me get rid of my bubble gum. Look like a cow with my hubba bubba. Anyway, I had to think because I have never really thought about that. Actually, um, we don't have that in our in this state. Um, it, I live in Pennsylvania, and. Uh, I had to think to formulate an opinion. I have an opinion now. So this is my opinion about assisted suicide. Um, which for those that don't understand what that is, it's just the concept of that if you have some level of terminal illness, you are given certain medications that would allow you to end your life on your own terms when you're ready, instead of it being up to the Lord God or Savior to make that determination for you. There's a lot of fear, I think, involved in this. Um, I feel like people who advocate for or want to pursue these types of methods are be are doing so because they're afraid of the dying process. Um, there are two ways to die. It's quickly or slowly. So if you're dying quickly, motor vehicle accident, sudden heart attack, you're not going to have time to worry about whether or not assisted suicide is an option for you. So it's the dying slowly part where people start to pursue this avenue as an option. I am speaking from personal experience. I've had over six years of experience working in hospice. I am sure there are exceptions to what I'm about to say. So I know there, I could foresee comments from people saying, well, I have an aunt or I have a friend or I have a somebody who had a horrible experience before they died. Usually it's the dying quickly ones that have the horrible experience. I'm saying they're in pain, they're scared, it's panic, it's chaos. You know, you're in the hospital, shock paddles, all that, you know, drama like you see on the television show. I've never experienced that. I've seen hundreds of people die. I've never experienced that level of drama, so I really don't know what it's like in reality. Um, but for the slow dying, there is no need to consider assisted suicide. When you ask people why they would consider it assisted suicide, it, and like I said, it, it, it always goes back to fear, but what they say is that I am afraid that I will be in a lot of pain. I don't want to die in horrible pain. I don't want to experience this, this terrible, you know, death. Um, I'd rather go out gently and, you know, on my own terms with all my loved ones around me, etc., etc. Um, The Lord does not put us in a position where our death is our final punishment for our sins. Um, I have never had a person in hospice close to death. Now, I'm not saying being on hospice in general. I mean, when they're in their last week of dying, I've never had that person say they're, they're, they're not ready to go. Every single one of them, when they're in that final week, 
when it's when it's time it's go time like their body is actively shutting down they want to go not because they're in pain not because they're afraid they're just tired and they're ready they're ready to move on to what's after they're ready to see their loved ones which many of them do before dying they're ready to I got too close to somebody. They're ready to um, let go, let their body go. And sometimes they're ready mentally far sooner than their body's ready physically. So, because the body fights, your body struggles. Even if you haven't eaten for days because you're too exhausted to swallow, your heart is hammering in your body, trying to pump that blood, trying to do what it's supposed to do because your organs don't have brains. You only have one brain and even if your brain says, okay, it's time to die, the rest of your body's like, but wait, I'm still beating. I'm still filtering that urine, you know, I'm still making poop. The colon's still moving. You know, all that stuff's still operating whether you want to go or not. So sometimes it takes a little longer than people want it to, but it's never a situation where they're in pain. Uh, if there is pain, it's not pain to a level that they can't manage. Sometimes people are in pain, you know, they just have chronic pain all the time. Um, ending that sooner, I suppose you could do that, but we never have them in a place where they're in so much pain that they are in misery. Um, you know, they might be sore because they have back sciatica or something like that, but especially with cancer and stuff, pain's always a big issue. But we are very aggressive in hospice with pain management. We're not going to say, oh, we're only giving you tramadol because, you know, we're, uh, we're um, uh -huh, a family practice that does not prescribe opiates. I know there's this big uh, lock and key, you know, doors closed on all opiate options in many of the healthcare industries. And I know if you go looking for pain medications, a lot of times um, you get... Um, the stigma put on you that you're med seeking and you know you might have a drug problem and they don't give you anything I remember the one time my husband he went to the emergency room because he needed prednisone he had um, a lot of inflammation and they're like oh he's med seeking he's looking it's like prednisone doesn't even get you high how that becomes med seeking is beyond me but they they sent him home with a urology recommendation it was insane so I get the system but it's not like that in hospice hospice you're dying and so they're like, okay, we do not want you in pain. We want you comfortable. And you celebrate the moments you have in hospice because there are days you have great days. You have good, solid days. There are days, I don't even say days, periods of time in a day. There are periods of time and days that are really, really bad. But uh, usually you're too tired to really do anything for a day's length so for example you might feel really sharp you might feel really um, alert and so that's a good day to get visitors that's a good day to see people and, and make peace and make you know say goodbye but usually uh, an hour two hours into the um, visit it's you're exhausted because you sleep a lot before you die you sleep a lot and you eat very little and you usually don't struggle with pain. You just don't. So the point of that, my saying this is that the biggest fear for assisted suicide should not be one because if there is ever a chance that we have somebody in services with us where they're, they're in hospice, like I do home hospice. So they're in services with us because they want to die in their homes. Um, if ever that happens, um, and they're in pain and it cannot, we can't control it. Like we've done everything we can. We've done fentanyl, we've done morphine, we've done it all. And they're still in pain. We're going to send them to the hospital because then they get hooked up to a drip, like an IV of morphine, um, or Dilaudid or whatever the case. And then that will be enough to control their pain until they pass. So there's always ways to manage that pain or the things that, that, that you're ideally afraid of that would cause someone to be like, no, no, I can't. I have horrible cancer. It's going to be painful. I need to take this pill now because what you're doing is robbing yourself and your family of those good moments that I talk about.
like those good solid days because you're not going to be having a bad day every single day you're not going to be in horrible pain every moment that you wake up it's going to just be you know these intermittent situations they get rectified they get dealt with with pain medication intervention and then you move on and in those times where you could be dead because you took a pill that helped you you know reach your destination the through the fat through the express lane those times that you're still you could be alive holding your child you could be alive saying some mo momentous thing to your husband or wife you know something to let them carry with them for the rest of their time um i think that that's so much more important than the fear um that you have to face so I just think if anyone's in that position where they're trying to decide whether or not they should take that route of assisted suicide, I highly recommend, of course, talking to, to your family and seeing what you're comfortable with. But in my opinion, don't um, allow, pain, uh, allow the fear of pain or fear of, of dying to make you want to accelerate everything and get it over with because you could be robbing yourself of, of weeks or months or even years depending on the situation where that you can have with your family and those that love you and cherish those moments with you um, by doing something rash because you're not sure what to expect because pain like I said is not usually a contributing factor we cover that in hospice so um yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. But if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll try to respond. I'm not the best with comments. I'm sorry, but I'll I'll try to respond. And on, if I have to do any follow-up videos, I will. But anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.